everyone, welcome to section 8.1, and this is when we're going to talk about the conic section known as the ellipse. So this is the ellipse lecture. We're gonna find traits of an ellipse and use them to sketch its graph. We'll write equations of ellipses in standard form, and then we'll actually spend our very last example solving an applied problem, which is always code for word problem, involving ellipses. Um, and when you hear me talk about conic sections, there are four conic sections that you are supposed to know about moving forward from this class. And two of them I'm confident you know about. We, you've talked about a circle before, and even in this class we've talked about the parabola. All right, we're gonna talk about the ellipse in this section, and if you move on in this chapter, if you wanna take a look at a little bit past this chapter, you would wanna focus on the hyperbola. Um, so a circle, right, you know what a circle looks like, that. You know what a parabola looks like. You can have your up or down parabola. Um, we can go even further and we can talk about sideways parabolas. Um, an ellipse is like a circle, and that's what we're gonna talk about in this, in this class, or in this section, excuse me. It's a circle that's either been flattened Right? Imagine that you sat on that circle, or if you hug that circle, it would be stretched vertically, so you could do either of those. Hyperbolas, they're not, this is not technical, all right, but it kind of looks like two parabolas lumped together. So those would be a horizontal set of, or a horizontal graph of a hyperbola, and we can also have the vertical version. All right. So we don't have time in this class to go through all of the traits of the hyperbola, but if you're moving on, it'd be a good idea just to breeze through the next section and see what, what is happening with in terms of traits of a hyperbola. All right, but what is an ellipse? All right, so let me scooch this up so that we can see what we got going on here. All right, so an ellipse, it's the set of all points in a plane, the sum of whose distances from two fixed points is constant. Each fixed point is a focus, or for plural, we would say foci of the ellipse. So what this is saying is, imagine you had, and I don't have enough hands to do this, but imagine I could put my two fingers here, all right? And then I could tie a piece of string around this finger and it connects here to this finger, right? So again, I don't have enough hands to do this, but if I had a piece of string, right, and I stretched it, right? Imagine I had a piece of string and I had a third hand by some miracle, or third finger, I'm just gonna put this here. All right, so imagine my finger's still here, my other finger's still here, but I had a string and I stretched it. And if I stretched it all the way around those two points, it would graph out an ellipse. So these are our two foci, right? Focus one, focus two, and this distance here, right? This D1 plus D2, it's constant. Because you have to imagine I have a string, right? A string, and I stretch it out, and then I kind of move my finger around and that'll graph out an ellipse. And while we're in this section, and, and really like I said, if you move on and look at the future sections in this chapter, you're gonna learn about vocabulary associated with ellipses, like center, vertices, focus, the major axis, the minor axis, and then the endpoints of the major and minor axes. And some of these vocab terms pop up in circles, parabolas, hyperbolas and ellipses. They pop up in the conic sections. Not every vocab term applies to every conic section. These are the ones that are specific to the ellipse. So let's just get a, a, a quick look at your basic ellipse graph. So let me move this up. All right, so here's your basic ellipse graph. Now this is a horizontal ellipse. You can imagine if you had a circle, it doesn't quite look like this, but imagine you had a circle and you sat on it and it got a little flat that would be an ellipse. All right, so what happens is, when it comes to an ellipse, either the horizontal part of the ellipse or the vertical part of the ellipse is longer, and we refer to those as the major and minor axis. In this case, because the horizontal component to the ellipse is longer, we're gonna call that the major axis, and we're gonna call this vertical one the minor axis. And this one happens to be centered at the origin. Not all of our ellipses in this section will be centered at the origin, but I'm gonna start us at the origin just because those tend to be easier problems to work with. So you have your center, you go out, at least in this case, left to your vertex, right to your vertex. Right? These would be the endpoints of what we call the major axis. All right? You're gonna go up 
and down a certain amount. And I'll explain what that certain amount is a little bit. And those would be the endpoints of the minor axis. You're also gonna have your two focus points. And I'll show you how to calculate all of that stuff. So when I talk about center, vertices, foci, the major axis, the minor axis, and the endpoints of the major axis, and the endpoints of the minor axis, that's what I'm referring to. And if you look at these two graphs over here, these are graphs of ellipses. They're all still centered at the origin, right? But you can see this is a vertical ellipse. This is a horizontal ellipse. And they've each got their formulas with them. And I'm gonna unpack these formulas as we move through this section. But I just want you to see what your basic graph of a vertical ellipse, basic graph of a horizontal ellipse looks like. And you're gonna hear me refer to letters A, B, and C as we move through these ellipses problems. So keep in mind, you can, you can start to see these letters popping up. You see a B squared down here, an A squared, you see a zero C, a zero negative C. So we're gonna keep track of three letters, A, B, and C, three constants as we move through our problems. All right, so with that, we're gonna to flip to the next page and we're gonna pick up our official formulas for vertices that aren't so much centered at the origin, but centered at anywhere, centered at any ordered pair that we'll call HK. All right, so let's flip the page and I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Hey, Math 31, welcome back. We're gonna take a look at the standard forms for ellipses centered at HK. Now, when I go through all of this, this stuff in this box, it's going to seem overwhelming. So be patient, right? Work through a few of the examples with me. Initially, I'll have the centers be at zero, zero at the origin, just so these formulas are a little bit easier and then we'll bump up to how we respond or how we kind of alter our thinking when the center isn't at the origin, when it's at something like one comma two. All right, so here we go. An ellipse with center HK and either a horizontal or vertical major axis of length 2A satisfies one of the following conditions where A is greater than B is greater than zero and C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared with C being positive or C being greater than zero. All right, so already that sounds like a lot, but let's, let's break this apart. When it comes to m manipulating ellipses and getting all of these traits and graphing them, I want you to hear that you have to keep track of three letters. So I want you to keep track at all times of letters A, B, and C. Kind of like we did when we were solving a quadratic equation, but this isn't really that situation. But still, even in a quadratic equation, using the quadratic formula, you were keeping track of A, B, and C. Now, A is always the larger or largest of the three numbers. So A is always larger than B, all right, and they're positive. So let's, let's also just take note of that. I'll put that, do I have room? I'll, I'll just put it here. So we'll have A is always the largest number. Okay. And once you know A and B, and those are the easier of the two to find typically, you'll use this formula, which kind of looks like the Pythagorean theorem. So you'll find C by applying the formula C squared equaling A squared minus B squared. So again, if we know A and B, we can square their two, those two numbers and subtract those squares, and then we'll find c squared. All right, so with that, let's try and pick this apart. This right here is the formula, the standard form, I should say, of an ellipse. The center is at hk. A in this version is under the, the x variable, right? So it's under the horizontal variable. B is under the vertical variable. And when A is under the horizontal variable, and I say horizontal because X always moves us left, right, which is a horizontal motion, then your major axis will be horizontal. Your minor axis will be vertical. And that again, horizontal, vertical, major, minor, because in this case, the major axis is longer than the minor axis. We will find the foci by finding that C number, right, and adding it and subtracting and adding it to and subtracting it from the X coordinate of your vertex. And then we'll leave the Y coordinate alone because the foci always live along the major axis. So when your major axis is horizontal, you're gonna move horizontally to get to your foci. Same is true for your vertices, but instead of adding and subtracting C units, we're gonna add and subtract A units. Like I said, this sounds a lot more convoluted 
than it is once we get going. I'll show it to you when we get going. It won't be as terrible. When it comes to the minor axis, we're gonna move up and down. Whenever you move up and down, that's affecting your Y coordinates. So you see that we're taking our vertex of HK, but I'm changing the Y coordinates because I'm adding and subtracting B from that Y coordinate. All right, now if you have a major axis that is vertical, meaning A, the larger of the two numbers, is under the vertical variable Y, right? Now notice that A is under the Y. Now all of a sudden my major axis is vertical. My minor axis is horizontal. My foci, if you take a look at your foci, right? It's not HK, that was the center. But take note that I'm adjusting the Y coordinate of my center. So I'm moving up and down off of my center C units. So I'll go up C units here, down C units here, and those will be my foci. Same is true with the vertices. I'm adjusting my Y coordinate. So I start at K, I go up A units and down A units. And the endpoints of the minor axis, those are a horizontal shift off of the um, vertex because the minor axis is horizontal. So I'm going to start at HK and I'm going to subtract B and add B and move that way. Like I said, it's more convoluted. It looks worse in this box than, than how it's going to be when we play this out. But before we get to example one, I just want us to take note of similarities and differences in, this, in these equations. So I want you to notice that we always have a one on the right side of the equation. All right, A will always be under the larger, or excuse me, A will always be the larger number. It might be under the X variable, it might be under the Y variable. All right, we'll just get our denominators and look at which one's larger and know that's equal to A squared, which means ultimately we'll square root that denominator to find A. And then the other number will be B squared and we'll, we'll square root that as well to find B. And then with those numbers, we'll find C squared by subtracting A squared minus B squared. All right, let, let's, let's get to it. There's only one way. We gotta stare this down and actually work a problem. All right, so let me get this graph in view. All right, so that we have some space to work. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got and mess with it. So it says, graph the ellipse, and here's the equation. Find the coordinates of the center, vertices, and foci. All right, so if I wanna do this, if you take a look at your, your equation right now, you do have an ellipse, and how, how you could actually tell you had an ellipse is, is because both variables are squared. Right? You see an x squared and a y squared. There's a plus sign here, and the constants in front of the x squared and y squared terms are different. All right? If for some reason, let's, and I know we don't have it, but if we had 4x squared plus 4y squared equaling 100, when they're the same like that, you actually have a circle. All right? But when they're different, you have an ellipse. All right. So with that, how do we get this into standard form? Well, I mentioned it above, but if you want to be in standard form, you need the number on the right side of the equation to be equal to 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my equation, 4x squared plus 25y squared being equal to 100, and I'm going to divide everything by 100. All right, so if you want to get your equation into standard form, and it wasn't given to you in standard form, then divide everything by that number on the right side of the equation. Well, if I do that, now I'm looking at x squared. Well, 4 over 100 simplifies to 25. 25 over 100, it leaves me with a 4 in the denominator, and then 100 over 100 is just 1. And that is an ellipse in standard form. So things I can tell right out the gate, since this is just simply x squared and y squared, I can read that my center is 0, 0. All right, so let's go ahead and put that in. I know my center is 0, 0, because technically you have something of the form x minus 0 squared over 25 plus y minus 0 squared over 4 being equal to 1. So this is my h, this is my k, right? x minus h squared, y minus k squared. But ultimately, ultimately, my origin is at 0, 0. Oh, I said that wrong. Ultimately, my center is at the origin, which is 0, 0. All right, and as I said, for the first few examples, I'm going to leave my center at 0, 0, just to make the, the formulas, all of these traits, slightly easier. All right, so I'm going to erase this, just so I have the space. The next thing it's asking me for is my vertices. OK, well, if it wants your vertices, Let's figure out what A and B are. All right. So once you start to get, or once I start asking you about other traits like vertices and foci, 
the next thing you want to do really is find A, B, and C. So now, in terms of finding A and B, they're always located with these denominators, and A will always be the larger of the numbers. So you can see right here, 25 is larger than 4, so I know A squared is equal to 25, and I know B squared is equal to 4. And just from there, I know A has to equal 5, and B has to equal 4. So I've got two out of my three numbers right there. Now I do have a formula that'll help me get to C squared, or excuse me, to C. We know C squared is equal to A squared minus B squared. So if I play that out, oops, let me scooch that up just a little bit more so I have all of that room. All right, in this case, A squared was 25, B squared was four, so when I subtract that out, I'm gonna get 21. Well, if c squared is equal to 21, that means c is equal to the square root of 21. All right, now technically c would be equal to either the positive or negative square root of 21, but c has to be a positive number because it represents a distance. So c is gonna be the square root of 21. Okay, so I've got my a, I've got my b, and I've got my c. Now, just for the sake of showing you how this works in the first problem, um, if we were to plug this number in our calculator, the square root of 21, it would be somewhere around four and a half. Let's see, square root of 21 is about 4.6. All right, and I just want us to keep that in mind as we look through this. All right, now I want you to see that A is the largest of the three numbers. That will always be the case with an ellipse. All right, so let me show you how you can get to the graph of the ellipse, just knowing the center and knowing A and B. So let's go ahead and label and scale. All right, so my center is zero, zero. Here's how you start to build the graph of your ellipse. A is five, and you'll see that five came under the x variable. Now, where do you move if your x variable is changing? Do you move up, down, left, or right? Well, x's are left-right motion. So since A is five, we're gonna move five units right of the origin, and then I'm gonna move five units left of the origin. All right, so I'm gonna say it again. I'm moving five units left and right because A is five, and that's under the fraction that has the X variable. Now these two points here are called vertices. So imagine you were at the origin and you move left, right, and I'm gonna break it down this way so that future problems can be worked through in the same way. If from the origin you're moving left, right, does that move your x coordinate or your y coordinate? Well, when you move left, right, that's talking about moving your x coordinate. So my vertices will be negative five, zero if I move left five, and positive five, zero if I move right five. So I'm gonna say it again. To get your vertices, go a units away from your origin, but along the major axis. And the major axis in this case is horizontal because X represents horizontal motion. So five units right, five units left, okay? Now, B, B is underneath the Y variable. So what that's gonna have me do is move up down for, oops, not, oh, I just realized I did, I, um, I, I messed this up a little bit, sorry. B squared is four, are you guys noticing my typo that B is actually two? My bad, my bad, there we go. I just caught it. All right, if, if B squared is four, B should be two. Um, I, I did put the four here, so everything's staying okay after that, but B is definitely two. All right, let me rework this. Since B is two, and it comes from the, or it's associated with the fraction that has the Y variable in it, we're gonna move up and down two units. So I'm gonna move two units up, and then I'm gonna move two units down from my origin, excuse me, from the center, which happens to be the origin. So two units up, two units down. Where this was telling me go five units left, five units right. All right, now imagine if you're at your center, which again happens to be the origin, and you're moving up and down. When you move up and down, does that affect X coordinates or Y coordinates? Well, up, down is Y motion. So from my center, I'm gonna keep the same, oops, excuse me, these are not foci. All right, so from my center, I'm gonna keep the same x variable, or x coordinate. This is gonna be zero, two, and then zero, negative two. 
Now these don't have vocab terms. I was, sometimes they're referred to as intercepts, so I was almost gonna graph or put them in a trait here, but it's not listed and your, your book doesn't actually call them intercepts, which is fine. Um, but I just want you to see that you would adjust your Y coordinate if you were moving up and down. All right, I'm gonna erase this just because I don't wanna get everything too crowded. Maybe I'll put it back in when I'm done. But at this point, you can see the beginnings of your ellipse. There we go. Now, this right up in here, that is your minor axis, right? And this in here is your major axis. So how do we start to, to pick this apart? And I will get to the foci. I just wanna give you guys a couple more traits here. So my major axis, all right, my major axis, it's horizontal, right? And how long is it? Well, think about this. I moved five units right and five units left because A was five. So my major axis, it's always two A units long. So my major axis is 10 units long. And on the flip of that, for my minor axis, it's vertical. And I went B units up and B units back, or two, I should say two units up, two units down. So the length of this is always 2B, so this minor axis is four units long. If I asked you for the endpoints of the major axis, I guess I will write these in. This will be negative five, zero, and five, zero. The endpoints of the minor axis are zero, two, and zero, negative two. All right. Now, foci are different, so foci, how foci work is they are along the major axis, but instead of going A units away like you do for the vertices, you're gonna go C units away. Now again, C was 4.6, so imagine I went 4.6 units right and 4.6 units left from the origin. Now again, oh I say origin, but I, I keep meaning to say center, it's just that my center happens to be the origin. Now, if I'm moving left and right from my center, which happens to be the origin, but left and right from my center, is that left-right motion going to affect your x-coordinate or your y-coordinate? Well, if it's left-right, it's going to be affecting our x-coordinate. So my foci will be square root of 21 comma zero, and then negative square root of 21 comma zero. All right, so that's what we have going on here. So our foci are always, they're pretty close to your vertices, and they always fall inside the ellipse, and that's because C is always smaller than A. All right, but they're along the major axis, pretty close to the vertices, and, and there you have it. All right, now just for fun, what's the domain and range of this relation? And I, I specifically said relation because this is not a function. All right, so if I wanted to just add to this, do I have enough space on the side? I'll do it right up here. If I wanted to, I could say, what are the domain and range for this function. Well, it looks like my domain, if I look at my left endpoint, I'm going from an x coordinate of negative five to positive five. And my range looks to be from negative two to positive two. Right. So we got all of that in there, okay? And this is, again, just looking at one ellipse that I had to get into standard form once I got it into standard form, when I divided everything by 100, I spotted a squared and b squared. All right, a squared is always the larger number. I square rooted both of those, and I, I had a little boo-boo, right? I did not square root that right away. So I got a was 5 and b was 2. I subtract a squared and b squared to get c squared. Square root that number, there's my c. All right, so from there, find your center, right? It's 0, 0 in this case. Move A units away from your center along the major axis to find your vertices. Move C units away from your center along the major axis to find your foci. All right, so with that, let's flip to the next example. Keep on working on these. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye.